apply and they'll kind of go in further in depth in those questions that you were probing there and if anybody is interested in that kind of intellectual side of uh, discovering Christ I think that would definitely build on what you've been talking about today Jason so thank you so much for coming on it was brilliant yeah thanks a million it's brilliant thank you so we're going to move on to our next speaker, um, Gustavo. It's a testimony from Gustavo up in Belfast. Um, Gustavo is married and has two children. He's originally from Brazil and he's lived in Belfast over the last six years. Um, he joined the Legion of Mary about four years ago and he's the secretary of Our Lady Queen of Peace Presidium in Belfast. Gustavo, I would attempt your surname, but I think <laughs> I'm probably going to pronounce it wrong. So I'll let you take over from here. We had tried to practice it earlier, but <laughs> we're not sure how well we did. Sure, no problem. It's just like lasagna is mouillon. Okay, yeah, that's not, don't know. no, we're <laughs> far, <laughs> far off, just as though we didn't attempt it. Fire away no there, problem. Gustavo. Yeah, hello there, everyone. So just not going to waste time on me because the time is too short, uh, 10 minutes. And I uh, just want to make things, try to make a short version of everything. And basically, I wasn't raised as a Catholic, first of all. And by when I was 15, I had a wonderful meeting with Christ, Jesus. And when I was seven years old, I was in a sense, offered to the devil. I don't know if you know about this. We call this um, candomblé in Brazil. But I was brought to this place. It's a sort of a paganism, uh, you know, false gods and stuff. They offered me to the devil there. When I was 15, I was in the front of the Blessed Sacrament and Jesus touched me and bre broke everything, you know, related to the devil there. And I lived for nine years in Brazil, a, a wonderful life, like pretty much all of us, like a, a Catholic, you try to do things for God, you try to, you know, do the will of God, being young, like many of us here, a young person. And just before moving to Belfast, around six, six years and a half, six years ago, I participated in a meeting it's a sort of a healing interior healing meeting and I was told by someone who prayed for me that I was going to live with my dad and I thought you know this is impossible whatever but I eventually came to live with my dad in Belfast so <laughs> that's how I came here and I lived with my dad for nine months after that I went to live sort of by myself I was 25 by the time and I I found myself I was completely lost because I, I haven't ever lived without you know close family and friends and stuff and this is one of the things that uh, struck me because um I was working by the time I actually worked in Robinson, the bar in Belfast here, I don't know, many of you know that, uh, this bar in Queens Victoria Street there. But anyway, I realized that for you to be friends with local people here, you need to sort of uh, learn and understand the culture and how they live. And one of the things I spotted is people here drink a lot. So I, to be friends with people, I started to drink what I haven't done in myself until I was 25. So, um, so that is the, the sort of life I started. But just before that, let me just tell you this. Um, there is a, a phrase from St. Teresa of Avila. She says, those who not pray earlier or later becomes an animal. So, I started to drink and I stopped to pray. So that's what my life went through, a dark path, all wrong ways. And when I realized my life was worthless, I was thinking, you know, because coming from my background, when I was 13, I thought about committing suicide because I, I thought, you know, people are so happy when you look at people out there, and especially nowadays, you look at people in social media, they seem to be so happy and they have a beautiful life and they have you know, wonderful things happening. And when I when I looked to myself, I was thinking my life is worthless. Why do I live? 
you know, all these sort of questions when I was 13, I know many of us maybe could have gone through that path as well. But anyway, when I was living this life, drinking and trying to find girls and everything, I went to a party one day in Lavrys, that is a bar, another pub here in Belfast. And in that night, I was, you know, I was so annoyed and thinking, what life am I living? Maybe some of us could be asking that. I don't know, you know, the sort of life you could be living today. But I asked myself that. And in a maybe 30 seconds prayer it was a while since I haven't prayed, haven't went to church or anything. But I prayed and said, God, show me, you know, show me something. I don't want to live in this darkness. I don't want to stay living in this sort of life. And in that night, the, the signal or what God showed me was what sin makes to people. And what I see is in that night, I threw up three times. I remember, and that was something that was like a shock in my life. And I said, wow, what am I doing? You know, when you wake up and after that, I told myself, I'm going to get back to the church. And God is great, you know. Um, one of the things that happened in this while is that one day I was praying and I was so irritated and I was crying out and I told God, why did you take you took me out from brazil to bring me to a place where i don't have friends where i'm lonely where i live a, this worthless life and one day i was praying this and then a couple of months after i was struggling trying to stop drinking stop this wrong life with you know the girls everything and I was participating pretty much like most of us here in a Catholic conference of the Legion of Mary around four years ago. And for the first time in maybe two years, I felt the presence of God. And was like, I felt, this is the image I remember, it was like I was in a desert and there was water coming from from the desert, you know, like when Moses hit that rock and it's the same way when Christ was pierced, blood and water flowed and God made wonderful things in my life in that day, in that conference. And um, after that, I went to confession. Many of us maybe could know here Father Andrew Black. I made my confession to him. And when he gave me the absolution, when he was with his hands like that, I felt and I had a vision like he was with his hands, like suck and taking out of me all the darkness, all the, you know, bad stuff that was in my soul. And I felt clean, you know, and I had hope. And that is one of the things that touched me deeply. And I was only in this conference because someone someone invited me <laughs> and it's written in the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 14 a loyal friend is a powerful defense. Whoever founds one has indeed found a treasure. And when I prayed, asking God why he brought me from Brazil to Belfast to leave me alone without friends, he answered my prayer as well because one day I was in the church and someone came. came. He couldn't speak much English, but the priest brought him to me 
because I learned English here in Belfast and it seems like I can speak, but it, it's not that I am good. It's just because I talk like local people. And he came to me and he was very friendly. And he got me my number and he thought I was a great Brazilian who was evangelizing Belfast. I was completely lost in the city, you know, with all sin and stuff. But he, over time, became my friend and he invited me to the Legion of Mary. And today, I am a secretary of the Legion of Mary. I am, you know, married, very happy married with two children. and. The Almighty made wonders, you know, wonderful things in my life. And I can say because of Our Lady. And I can say because of the Catholic Church. And this person is watching here. Felipe is the one who invited me. And I am just grateful for everything that God did in my life. And just to finish off, I want to finish with one praise from Santo Thomas Aquinas, that my son is named after him. <clears throat> he said, who found God in this life, found everything he needed. Amen. Gustav, I don't think there's a dry eye in the audience, including my own, <laughs> I would admit. My goodness, so very powerful, very powerful. And the, the, I think the biggest thing that jumped out at me is, is the parable of the prodigal son and how God is just always waiting for us, you know, just waiting for us to come back. And you're, you're just a true example of that prodigal son, you know, who lived a life of misery, of sin, as we all do, but who, who came back to Christ. And it really struck me that, you know, that's what we're all searching for is that love of Christ. And if we take that leap of faith and just open our heart to that well we realize that that's exactly what we're searching for and it's just so beautiful to hear well firstly your Belfast accent yeah you're right at home up there in Belfast <laughs> but to hear as well you know that you're, you're now happily married with two children we saw one of them yesterday on our our little, She's um, gorgeous. Our little call <laughs> yes well thank you so much and I know you're you're certainly going to touch hearts um on this this call um and you also have a blog isn't it you have a blog that um we'd like to give a shout out to it's um a, a catholic in belfast have i got that have i got that correct? exactly yeah so since this, the testimony is too long if people want to uh, read about it i wrote a testimony from the fact that mm -hmm. one day it was going to be aborted mm -hmm. and i wrote another one from the one when i was 13 that i was going to commit suicide so maybe that can help some people as so well yeah. just look for catholic in belfast blogspot.com that's brilliant thank you so much gustavo